Oppenheimer is one of the most anticipated summer blockbusters of 2023, and the movie's effects team made a fantastic effort to ensure historical authenticity in their recreation of one of the world's most harrowing moments. On July 16, 1945, J. Robert Oppenheimer tested out the world's first atomic bomb in New Mexico, in the middle of an isolated desert. As recounted in the book American Prometheus, The Triumph and Tragedy of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the people who witnessed the test thought that the world ended at the very moment the bomb exploded. This was a terrifying and rather cinematic moment. So it's no surprise that writer-director Christopher Nolan had to adapt the Trinity test for his epic biopic thriller Oppenheimer. In a roundtable discussion with Entertainment Weekly alongside some of the film's stars, Nolan revealed, and We always knew that the Trinity test would have to be a showstopper. It's the fulcrum that the, the whole story turns on. Nolan was absolutely sure about one thing. After featuring CGI explosions in his 2012 film The Dark Knight Rises, a digital version of the Trinity test just wouldn't cut it. So he asked Andrew Jackson, his visual effects supervisor from Tenet, for help. As Nolan explained, I wanted to take CG off the table and see if he could come up with real-world methodologies for producing the effect of the first atomic blast. Nolan essentially wanted to peek inside Oppenheimer's mind and come up with a visualization of the quantum world. Luckily for him, his effects supervisor felt comfortable in both the digital computer realm as well as the analog world. As Nolan put it, Jackson is wonderful with that. And so we spent months and months and months doing all these experiments and figuring out all these methods some very, very small and microscopic, some of them absolutely colossal. Jackson teamed up with special effects supervisor Scott Fisher and production designer Ruth De Jong to oversee the recreation of the atomic bomb. This thrilled Nolan, even though he told his crew that they didn't actually need to go quite that far. As the director explained, when we were trying to make our budget work, it was like, well, what do you need to see of the gadget itself? I was like, well, we only see it in these shots and those shots, and they ignored that completely from me. Nolan wasn't expecting his team to design a version of the bomb in such exacting detail. But that was exactly what they ended up doing, which allowed the production to move forward in an exciting direction. As Nolan recounted, We were then free to shoot the entire process, the shrink wrapping on it as it comes up in the truck that gets cut off, the way that the different modules are inserted in and wired up. We were able to build the tension up to the detonation by showing that process that they went through. Nolan was able to use replicas of the bunkers that Oppenheimer and his colleagues were stationed in before the Trinity tests and during its aftermath. Specifically, production designer Ruth De Jong built the bunkers in such a way that they could shoot in the desert in the middle of the night. This allowed the actors to essentially vicariously experience what the actual historical figures went through in the lead-up to the test. Nolan is famously a stickler for authenticity such as when he shot the rotating hallway scene in 2010's Inception with mostly practical effects. And it seems like everything came together perfectly once again for Oppenheimer. From the weather to the incredible efforts of the production team, in particular, shooting in the New Mexico desert paid off handsomely. As Nolan explained, all of it just informs the whole drama of the piece, and the build-up to Trinity is the key. It's really all about the tension leading up to it and the process that they went through. The revelation of the first atomic explosion to the world was one of the most important moments in the 20th century. 